Hey folks, I'm attorney Roger P. Foley. I'm trying something new today. I'm going to talk to you about a case that occurred in South Carolina. A young man that was selling some roses ultimately got arrested. Um, and it wasn't for selling roses, just so you know, but let, let's get into it. Questioning the arrest. Sadeja Smalls got the police report and heard from the community and even the family attorney today. Sid, what did you see on those videos? Well, Katie, one of the videos showing police pushing on the boy's neck or shoulders, the Facebook video had been shared thousands of times. Activists say this incident is a major setback. Take a look at these videos posted to Facebook Monday afternoon. Now, we've blurred them to protect the minor's identity, but in this clip, two Somerville police officers are shown holding onto the teen outside of the Bummer and North Main Market. Then the officers pinning the minor to the ground by pushing on his neck. Community activists... This is the part I want to start with. There we go. When Spade says after watching these videos, he's disgusted. I was, it was full of anger, full of rage. Um, clearly, it was excessive force. Like, you, you know, this kid looks, you could tell he was a kid. Might be 120 pounds, right? Small kid. And this grown man is applying pressure on the back of his neck. According to... Let, let me go back because this is what I thought about as soon as he said that. Hang on a second. He goes, let, listen to this, folks. He's disgusted. I was, it was full of anger, full of rage. Um, clearly, it was excessive force. Clearly, OJ was innocent, too. <laughs> like, the come on, man. Clearly. Of so let, let me get on with this. Let's go. I, I, I listened to some of this as I was on my way home tonight, and I just went, you know what? I'm going to try this new program, and I'm going to give it a shot. So this isn't going to be the popular opinion. It's not what everyone's talking about. I'm going to give you the antithesis. I'm going to give you the opposite of what everyone's saying. So, all right. So you just heard about this video, and it's clear, right? So let's let's uh, give me a second. Let me see if I if I can switch the tabs here. Uh, trying to figure. Uh, there we go. Share this tab instead. All right, here we go. Let's watch this video. You have an ID on you? Why? What are you doing? You're getting ready to go to jail. It's why. How? How? Because I'm going to push you in that car. Okay, so the officers continued talking to the teen and informed him that he needed a business license to sell the roses. The 13-year-old then started cursing at officers. That's when police moved to detain him. The Somerville Police Department says the teen immediately resisted and then punched the female officer in the face. Okay, so some of it is faint and hard to hard to hear, but you got to listen closely. So immediately after this. You can see the moment the teen strikes the officer. We slowed it down for you. Officials say, as you can see here, that the strike caused the officer to have a black eye. The minor's family attorney released a statement saying that the male officer acted as the initial aggressor. He says the footage was heavily edited and redacted parts of the situation. All right, let's bring in Chief Legal Analyst Mike Rhodes. Well, let, let's not. Let, let's bring in Chief Analyst Roger P. Foley. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Now. Right, 
So at that moment, at that moment, folks, that's when he finally gave his hand. But I, I want to go back in this video just just a little bit because I'm going to talk to you about a bunch of stuff here. All right. So I want you to I want you to look at it. Reasons I want old dog new tricks. Here we go. Check this out. I want you to pay attention so I don't have to go back because I'm not an editor, but please pay attention to this. Now, did the well, let's talk about it briefly. J just the introduction there, right? Was the male officer? I didn't like his tone. He approached a little aggressive. Why? Because you'll go to jail. Maybe come over and and I would how I would like my officer to approach, right? If if I'm a citizen in charge of officers, I'm not an officer, right? But as a defense attorney, I want an officer to approach. He's obviously a young man. I don't know how old he is. He could be 10. He could be 20, right? Um, hi, my name is Officer Smith. Um, I want to let you know that you're not allowed to be here unless you have a permit. Do you have a permit to do this? No. Okay, well, listen, you're not allowed to be here. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. I would like a, a nicer approach. I think the officer is a little aggressive, but tone Tone is tone. People in Walmart give you attitude, right? Give you tone. Officers give you tone. They're people, right? So, and I'm not out here advocating for officers. I'm here advocating for people. We all have a tone at some point, right? Especially when we're doing our jobs. So just hang on a sec. You heard it. You guys see the words, right? Just imagine. Now, you saw how it started, right? The officer, the ballot officer, a little bit of tone. Hey, man, you're, you're going to go to jail. You, I don't need that. I don't need this. Calls the officer a white bitch, calls her a bitch two separate times, right? Can you imagine if the officer would have said something racial? How would that have looked? 
So I'm going to explain this to you and I'm going to break it down with my logic. Okay. Now what I want you to do, you saw that, right? You, you saw that they fought. This is the abbreviated version, but the uncut version, which doesn't have the subtitles, right? Stop, stop. Officers allowed to take in them, folks. He's clearly resisting by any state statute. One cuff on. He's still fighting. Several commands. Right there, she just got punched in the face. As soon as she pulls out the firearm, as soon as she pulls out the taser, he finally listens. Now we detained, okay? Now, let's go to this fun gentleman from the news. He's an activist. Let's hear what he's got to say. Full of anger, full of rage. Um, clearly, it was excessive force. Like, clearly, you know, this clearly, kid, OJ was innocent. Looks, you could tell he was a kid. Might be 120 pounds, right? Small kid, and this grown man is applying pressure on the back of his neck. Clearly, he's an activist. I, what, where, where, where was that guy? Is he? Where is he? Where is he? It, it looks like he's in the back of a van. Dusted. I was. It was full of anger, full of rage. Um, clearly, it was excessive force. Like, really? you, you know, this kid looks. You could tell he was a kid. Might be 120 pounds, right? He looks like he's about six two. I can't tell his weight, but he obviously is strong enough to be resisting and and making those officers work for their money, okay? So, I, here we go. Listen to this. The video of what unfolded on April the 1st. And what I can tell you is that in watching the video with the family and talking with the officers as a result, um, it's an unfortunate situation. That es It's definitely unfortunate. Unfortunately, unfortunate that all these folks you see in that picture right there, right? The gentleman to the left, the next gentleman, the woman in the back, the other woman in the back with the hat, the mama standing right next to him with her with her lip gloss on, ready for the camera, right? It's unfortunate that they weren't there with the child, right? This is the problem. The officer's tone, the male, I get it, not the best tone. I would like him to approach in a much different fashion. I would like him to be polite. Hey, I'm Officer Smith. Um, you're not allowed to be here, et cetera. But that's not what happened. Now listen to this gentleman, and I'm going to show you what's important here. Escalated to a point that was unnecessary. What we saw in the video was a young man who wanted to sell roses in front of a Walmart. You see two officers, particular Officer G and Officer Kirkland, who stopped him. Upon stopping him, they immediately approached him and asked him whether he had any kind of ID or license. Good Lord, asking for ID. Do you have a permit to do this? Did you get permission from Walmart? Anybody? Do you have anything, son? To sell roses in front of that Walmart. Now, the questioning of whether he had an ID or any license isn't of the particular matter. Currently. I don't even know what he said. It's not of a particular matter currently. What does that mean? Um, um, it is important 
because they didn't come over and tackle him to the ground. They came over to him and asked him, hey, do you have any idea? They Look, they talked to him on the bullhorn or whatever it is, the, the microphone from the car. And I don't like that. He's not a dog. He's not an animal. You get out of the car, you introduce yourself and you say what the issue is. You don't get out of the way. You know, when, when cops do that, I, I'm sickened by that. So I didn't like that, that they started that way because that's how they started this over a microphone. And then they got out and then they started talking to him. But he displayed attitude, called her a white bitch, called her a bitch a second time. You can go back to the video and watch it a dozen times. He, he said it. All right. Um, it escalated because he had attitude. He said, well, you get her. You know, I'm not going there. I'm not doing that. I'm not like totally disrespectful. Again, this woman to the right here that, that claims his mama. That's not a mama. A mama. All these folks, where were they on that day? Right. They're all standing around now because they got the hand out. Right. Please tell me, please tell me that the prosecutor's office, the state attorney's office is going to file charge. He punched that officer in the face. Right. Doesn't matter what their tone was. That doesn't people have tone all the time. Do you, can you punch him in the face? Sure. We'd like to sometimes punch people in the face when they give us tone. But we're a civilized nation. Right. We, we, we're supposed to walk away. He didn't walk away. He, he didn't listen to what they were saying. He had attitude. Right. Um, what is problematic is the nature by which he was approached. Um, on the video, you will see that Officer G immediately and aggress aggressively approaches him, asking for ID, asking for um, the if he had any kind of license, and it was in an aggressive manner. Uh, what I will submit to you is the way that he approached the young man was not in a way that suggested to me and suggested to this family uh, that it was not going to be a situation that he wanted to diffuse, but in fact, escalate to a, to a matter that it ultimately did. First of all, again, I'm not here to give a lecture on what police should do and shouldn't do, but the officer has to assert some authority, right? Because a gun and a badge these days doesn't really get that done. So they have to elevate their voice a little bit, right? I, I may not like it. You may not like it, but that, that's part of their job. That's part of their training. He's clearly an older man versus a younger man, and he needs to assert his authority with his voice. A lot better than going hands-on, right? But that didn't work with this young man because he wasn't taught by the woman off to the right here, wasn't taught to respect his elders, wasn't taught to respect other people, was cursing right from the beginning. Let, let's just keep watching this. Um, you will see on the video that the officer uh, grabs the minor um, by the hand, at which point um, he attempts to subdue him. Um, during That's what police do. I, I don't know. In that attempt to subdue him, uh, the minor is taken to the ground. He's not taken to the ground immediately. He's, lo he's lost in context here. They give him verbal commands several times, right? He's not punching him. He's not twisting his arm. He's saying, put your hands behind your back, and the female officer is yelling. At which point, there's another officer, Officer Kirkland, who pulls out a taser, um, briefly points it at the minor. But at this point, he was already in handcuffs and subdued. Um, you will see not only in the video, but also the, the other videos that have been surrounded, uh, that his head um, hits the concrete multiple times while he's already detained in handcuffs. Um, they basically got him on the ground. You guys heard, right? He was already subdued. Come on now. Like, you know he watched the video, and you know he watched it a few times, right? We got a long time. Now watch this. One handcuff on. Punches the officer in the face. Still resisting. Okay, do you see both handcuffs on? Kills me. Kills me when someone lies. Yeah. Videos 
that have been surrounded, uh, that his head um, hits the concrete multiple times while he's already detained in handcuffs. Um, they basically got him on the ground. Hang on. Subdued. Um, you will see not only in the video, but also the, the other videos that have been surrounded, uh, that his head um, hits uh, the at which point um, he attempts to subdue him. Um, during that attempt to subdue him, uh, the minor is taken to the ground, at which point there's another officer, Officer Kirkland, who pulls out a taser, um, briefly points it at the minor. But at this point, he was already in handcuffs. He was not. He was not. He had one handcuff on and he was still fighting. Now, let's keep listening to this. Uh, that's the first part of being a defense attorney. You have to acknowledge what your client's doing to a jury because he's, I may submit to you, right? He, he's got all the lingo, but here's the reality. You have to show what your client did incorrectly, right? You have to show where his culpability is, what he did wrong. He's ignoring it. It's clear as day, right? Now, watch this. And subdued. Um, you will see not only in the video, but also the, the other videos that have been surrounded, uh, that his head um, hits the concrete multiple times while he's already detained in handcuffs. Um, they basically got him on the ground, um, and there seems to be this aggressive attempt uh, to try to subdue him. Um, what we will tell you is this was an overreaction. Um, this was an escalation, and there was no attempt to try to de-escalate the event. Uh, from the time that they approached him. Acknowledge, yes, the officers had called um, out on a loudspeaker um, asking the young man and the other juvenile who was with them uh, to, to leave the premises. Uh, but this young man sells roses uh, quite often. And while this was his first time at Walmart. Uh, who cares? How often he sells roses? Who cares? What does that have to do with anything? And he just says, although this is the first time at Walmart, what is it? Who cares if he sold three million roses? What does that have to do with this argument in this incident? Just weak argument. He had been selling roses at other businesses for quite some time. And those of us who live in are familiar with the Charleston area recognize uh, that these rose peddlers are just. Rose peddlers, <laughs> just so friggin' ridiculous. People who share in an entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial spirit and, and want to do something. And, and He's just an entrepreneur. If you want to be an entrepreneur, you have to get some advice, some leadership, some tutelage. And the people in this photo, right, the people that are talking or are standing behind this uh, attorney, where were they? Where were they? Not to be found. And guess what? After they get a check, hopefully they don't get a check. But if they get a check, they'll be right back out of that young man's life and fail him by not giving him tutelage, by not 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 helping him, not not explaining to him basic courtesies, basic manners, basic ethics. Treat your elders as if, you know, they were your mom or your dad or as if Jesus was in the room. Somehow that got missed, but they're all around now. He make an honest buck, and that's all he was doing. Ladies and gentlemen, he was just trying to make an honest dollar. I mean, listen, I mean, the police were just out of control. I mean, they just came in with force. I mean, they just wanted to escalate it from here to here to here. They just go. I mean, this poor baby, he's just a baby. He's just a baby. You see him, he's just a baby. Now, now comes the moment where they ask for the money. Um, and to be approached in an aggressive manner um, by a police officer who, in my opinion, and, and by looking at the vid video, um, did not have any immediate intention on trying to de-escalate this. Who gives a crap about his opinion? His opinion's not relevant. And if he ever gets into a jury trial, the judge is going to say his opinion means squat situation, but rather escalating it to a point um, of aggression. He escalated it when when the guy when the kid said, I don't I don't care. You can't do that. You white, you know, white bitch. God. 
Oh, you got to be kidding point me. point where this young man was physically subdued, uh, taken to the ground, handcuffed, um, head hitting the cement a couple of times, and ultimately leading to some physical injuries uh, by him. Told you the money was coming. Talking with the police department, they will. <laughs> Told you the money grab's coming. We'll be releasing the video. Uh, we've called on the video to be released publicly, and that will be happening. And so a media will be provided a copy um, of that video so you all can see what we just saw. Um, but what I will tell you is that, and it, the police department acknowledged, and I will tell you, they acknowledge it's a bad look. It's a bad look if you cut this part of the video out and show them grabbing it. And why is it a bad look, right? Because they're trying to make it two white officers and a young black man. They're trying to turn it into a racial thing from the whites keeping down the blacks. That's what they're trying to do. But the reality is any racism that was exhibited in this video was from that young man calling her a white bitch. C come on. I want to quote. It's a bad look. I don't know yeah. what officer, what officer would say that. It's a bad look. It's a bad luck. It, again, if you see a, a sliver of the video, watch the I whole mean, video. It uh, should not have happened. Uh, it should not have escalated uh, to the level that it did. Look, look at her shaking her head. Mama, if you would have been there, right? Because if this was the Boy Scouts or the, the, the Girl Scouts and they were selling cookies, you know what you see on the side of the road, right? When you see them at the store in front of Walmart, the family's there, the mother's there, the uncle there, the dad's there. That's the difference. Don't make that Cub Scout, Girl Scout, football team, track team. Don't make that argument because he was left by himself. No permission. What, what do the Girl Scouts do? They, they walk over and they speak to the manager. right? What do the parents do? They walk over and speak to the manager and they get permission to do it. None of these folks were there. They're, they're there now because... They, they hear the cash register opening, and hopefully South Carolina doesn't pay a dollar. And it's unfortunate. And the young man not only physically is harmed, um, but the emotional toll that is taken on him, um, his family. He didn't get tackled or punched or anything any more than he would be if he was playing flag football with his boys. Seriously. Come on. Oh, his head hit the ground. Come, he was fine. Didn't need an ambulance. He's fine. He might stay home from school. <laughs> I mean, he's an entrepreneur, so he may have, you know, who knows if he's still in school. He's 13. He should be in school. As a result of it uh, is one that he will be dealing with and they will be dealing with uh, for quite some time. Money grab, money grab. I know that there are questions surrounding and, and you saw in the reports that there were allegations that the young man struck one of the female officers, Officer Kirkland. Um, I can tell you in looking at the video, um, that is not clear. And, and we asked the police chief. That that's not clear They they didn't. They... Folks, it's not clear. I mean, you didn't see. His arm go like this, and you didn't see the, you know, you didn't see the fat bruise under her eye almost instantly. Come on. I can tell you we didn't see it. It's not conclusive. What do you, do you need to have a picture with it connecting? Come on. So stupid. I was listening to that as I was driving home. As soon as that man said that, in my mind, I went zero credibility. Zero, goose egg, nothing, no credibility does that man have. Because again, you have to acknowledge what your client did and what your client didn't do. Sure, you focus on what the other party does when you're making an argument, but you have to acknowledge what your client did. He's not acknowledging it. He has no credibility. If that man tries this case, if, if the state fi files this case and goes forward, that little problem that he has with telling the truth right? Admitting the, what his client could have done better, that's what's going to lose him the case. You heard it here. The officers who showed us in the room um, about that specifically, we asked, where do you see the young man striking us, striking her? Uh, they, they, we played that clip multiple times, and it is not clear that this young man strikes this officer. 
or what you see is him handcuffed with uh, the left hand. There's a handcuff on the left hand. Um, and then there's another officer, Officer G, that basically has him subdued and engaged with his right arm. Hang on. There we go. So the punch. Boom. You see her face turn. Oh. 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 She just got hit. Where'd the bruise come from? Are they saying that she went in the bathroom and popped herself? His hand. Boom. Come on now. Clear as day. Clear as day media reports and the way it's been presented to you all suggest that there was some open fist or closed fist punch to this officer. Um, that is not clear in my viewing of the video. Again, his so view we all looked at it. And, and that was a question that came up quite <laughs> in his view. It's a question that came up. It's a one sided argument, folks. You just saw the video. Come on. He has zero credibility. I'm a criminal defense attorney. My job is to defend people, right? Could I defend this case? Yes, I could defend this case. Would I make these ludicrous arguments? Absolutely not. Stay in politics, young man. Stay in politics. This is not the argument that you make. Watch. I, please, state attorney, file the charges for Bat Leo or assault, whatever they call it in South Carolina. Please file the charges. Well, it's juvenile court, so it's going to be a bench trial. That will not work with the jury. Um, if it's a good judge, it won't work with the judge either. Quite a bit. And so, again, I will tell you um, what happened to this young man was wrong. Um, the police department certainly acknowledges that it is a bad look and that, in my estimation, um, things could have and should have been handled differently. Yeah, that young man should have been a little bit more respectful. Uh, we we, we, we want to make sure that not only are we getting justice for this family and what happened, uh, because he's been charged criminally. And, and we want to make sure that those charges are resolved. Um, but the civil Hang on. component of this case requires us to make sure that this doesn't happen uh, to any other young people who want to engage in some kind of entrepreneurial business outside. And there are a couple of questions that I have, and then I'll yield for any questions uh, that the media may have. I got a question, sir. Where was his mama? Where was his uncle? Where, where was that other? Y'all, where were y'all folks when, when he was doing this? Where were y'all? Where were you? I, I got a question. I got a question. Um, mama, did, did you, did you teach him to respect his elders? Did you teach him to talk to police like that? Did you teach him to talk to anybody like that? Did you tell him that to call a, a, a woman, a white bitch? Did, did you say, did you do, did you teach that? I'm just curious. Hell, mama should be charged. Let's listen to this clown. This guy's a clown. Can't even believe that there's like attorneys out there agreeing with him. I, I really can't. But in looking at the video and in talking with the officers, it begs the question, how did we devolve to a point where we're criminalizing and targeting these young men who are rose peddlers? He's just a rose peddler, ladies and gentlemen. He just he just trying to make a couple of dollars. I mean, he just he just got the little piece of paper and he's doing his thing. And he, he ain't bothering nobody. Ain't no one asked. I mean, they did ask him to leave on the bullhorn, but 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 he can't hear so good. And and they, you know, he he's just a respectful young man. He's an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur. That that's it. Like. I want 50, no, no, not 50, I'm sorry. I mean, 150 million. I mean, they just beat the boy with brutality. They just brutal. Come on. Come on. Someone's got to call this bullshit out, man. Seriously. Listen to this guy. My goodness, I can't believe it. This isn't the first situation where these rose peddlers have come under scrutiny. This is something that's been unique 
to Charleston quite a bit. Those who live in the Charleston area know about them downtown. The young man was simply trying to earn an honest buck. Just trying to make an honest buck. Come on now. Just, man, come on. Listen, he couldn't sell the, couldn't sell the flowers, and the police gen just took him to the ground for no reason. So could you just give me $150 million? Just $150 million, I, I won't bother y'all no more. Come on. This is so stupid. And the way the officer approached this young man, it was as if he had already determined he was guilty from the outset. Um, I'm pretty sure no one's applying for a license to do to to to, to make flowers in front of Walmart. Look, guys, I don't want to sound heartless here. I get it. He's a young man. His mom. His family could have went approach and said, hey, is it okay if, if my son does this? They could have sent something to corporate, right? They didn't, right? It, is, is selling some flowers out in, in front of Walmart a, a huge crime? No. But you know where the crime comes in from? The crime comes? If you think the cops had tone, what, what did he have? What did that young man have when he when he he racially profiled her by, by his words? You white. He didn't say... Just the B word, you white bitch. Come on. Are you not acknowledging that? Come on. Just no fault of it. You can't do anything. When the cop says ID, he doesn't try to get his ID. He's about to run. You can see it. He's about to run. So ridiculous. Could I defend it? I could defend it. But I, I probably would deny that. I, I wouldn't take the case. Because I wouldn't stand out there like this gentleman is and proffer a BS story to get a check. Because that's all it is. It was with the intention to get this young man off of property when all he was doing was trying to earn his honest buck and, and not doing anything to harass. And now I'll, I'll let you ask some questions after in a second, Raphael. Um, but there are a couple of questions that I would ask, and, and these are questions that we're asking the Somerville Police Department and, and we will ask, but I'm interested to know how many citations have been issued at this particular location for Rose Pebble? Okay, folks, here's another inst instance where you know that the guy, he's not very good. I'm going to say it that way. You don't make a comparison. It's the weakest argument to start comparing how many citations have been given out for rose peddlers. Why is that relevant? Why is that? What does that have to do with this young man? If he was being asked to leave, their purpose was for him to leave. That's it. To leave. Not to fight with them. Not to necessarily even give them a citation. But to, to tell him to leave to trespass him. What what does how many citations have been handed out have to do with his particular facts? You cannot make an argument about your client talking about, well, they didn't do it with that person. That's the weakest argument out there. It's for the, the uneducated. You don't make that argument. Uh, they say that you need a business license to operate. Well, I'm interested to know how many business licenses have been applied for. Who gives a shit? How many licenses have been applied for? Well, why is that relevant? The process is to apply for one. And I'm pretty sure that you can't apply, you cannot apply for a business license to do business on someone else's, at someone else's place of business. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that would be all 50 states. You would have to get permission from corporate or from the manager to be able to do something like that. So if you were going to, Maybe apply for a Girl Scout license or a Boy Scout or Cub Scouts or whatever. You know, maybe, maybe there is something out there. But why is that relevant? Why is that relevant? If there's a law that requires it, there's a law that requires it. Again, this comes down to family training. They're not training this young man. They're not there for him. They're not teaching him how to be an entrepreneur. They're just standing out there with their hands to collect now. And receive as a result of this. Um, over the last year or so, you know, those are questions that we, 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 we must ask because it's not uncommon, whether it's Girl Scouts or church groups or little league groups 
to gather in front of storefronts, whether it's selling cookies, selling lemonade, selling whatever, uh, to make an honest buck, to raise money for particular situations. And this young man was no different. He was totally different, folks. He was totally different. And the reason why he was totally different is because Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts and church groups have parents and adults present. I've never sat, I've never walked into a store where there were Cub Scouts and there was just a bunch of six and seven year olds. Never. I've always seen a mom, a den leader, whatever they're called, den mother, you know, Cub father, Cub Scout, you know, leader, whatever they're called. They're always there. Church groups, always there. This young man was by himself disrespectful. Is it his First Amendment right to tell the officer to F off? Sure. But at that point, the officer was doing his investigation and he had reasonable suspicion to stop him. And he had, because of the way the young man was acting and positioning himself further from the door, he had a reason to put hands on. All he did was grab his hand. To, hey, don't go. And then instantly the young man started fighting with him. So was there reasonable suspicion to, to stop him? Was there probable cause to stop him? There was, right? I mean, we're not crime of the century, but, you know, ultimately an ordinance violation or a very low level misdemeanor. And so how do we get to the point of criminalizing them, criminalizing him? And is the ordinance being applied evenly? Is it being applied fairly? And is it being applied justly? Uh, I would submit to you it's not. Um, but that's why we want to pursue this, because those are the questions uh, that we want to ask. Um, and then I'll end with this. That, that's what he's talking about. Is it justly? How many people are applying? That, that's not the issue. The issue is what this young man did, right? That's an argument when you're somewhere else, not for this particular case. He didn't apply for a permit. He didn't get permission from Walmart. He didn't call corporate. He wasn't there with his family or adults. He wasn't. He's a minor. He's a 13-year-old. And then I'll, I'll yield for any questions. Well, I'll yield for any questions and let um, and then turn it over. But the, you know, I, I understand and recognize law enforcement has a difficult job to do. Um, I think any of us who are standing up here today are sympathetic to that. Um, but we have to weigh that with and against the interests of the public and making sure that the decisions that are made are not going to be harmful, or they're not going to unfairly target people and, and put innocent people in harm's way. But again, there's a video that will show so much of what I've just outlined who was innocent, who was targeted. A copy of that video, and, and you can dissect that as you wish. Um, but I thank you all for being here again. Just you know, this this family is grieving, and so I'm not going to have um, the mother speak and, and, and or any of the other family members speak. And so I, <laughs> they're I, I grieving. Don't ask any questions directed at her because she she's not going to. They're grieving. I mean, he got knocked to the floor, put the handcuffs on. Nothing more than a pickup football game with the boys. Come on. Well, the chief did acknowledge that it's a bad look. Okay. And so he he recognizes that chief should be that fired. That things probably could have could have been handled differently. Um, did he explicitly say that? No, but uh, but I believe oh. he recognizes things could have been handled differently. Um in this <laughs> wait a second. Um, but wait a obviously second. He's defending, you know, the officer's actions. Um, I believe he you know, they they're wait a second. Are you kidding me? How many times could this man lose credibility? I mean, he didn't actually say that. I mean, he 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 said there was a bad look. I mean, there's a bad look. I mean, this doesn't look good for the police department in, in South Carolina, but he didn't specifically say that. You know what I'm saying? Come on. This guy, how is this guy an attorney? Obviously, he's a politician. He's not an attorney. This guy is not in a courtroom on a daily basis. I can just tell you that. These are not stiff. This is Al Sharpton. This is like those type of people, those type of clowns, right? That are just there, that don't care about their own people, that are just there to get a dollar, to get their face in the news and to, and to get a dollar from it. That, that's why they're there. 
So crazy. So crazy. Now, I'm going to end with this. If you want the total opposite of <laughs> what my thoughts are, and, and I actually like this guy. Um, hang on a second. I'm sure you guys know the, the civil guy. A lot of stuff he does, I, I agree with. A lot of his points I, I enjoy, um, but I disagree with him on this one. To post the body cam footage or the raw body cam footage, and as often happens, they think that the public is going to agree with them, but do you agree? What's the rest of the story? Well, not a whole lot. After the kid was handcuffed, he told the officers that he was only 13. And because he was underage, police will not release his name. He declined medical attention, and the officer who was allegedly punched in the face by him was treated by EMS at the scene, according to the cops. The Rose Peddler, as they referred to him, was charged with assaulting an officer engaged in official duties and released to his mother. The cops also said that the officers determined that the second person who was who had been selling Palmetto Roses was on an active trespass notice for Walmart. Police say that they've previously responded to several businesses that have complained about shoplifting by juveniles who were selling Palmetto Rose. First officer yeah. the department's hospitality team, LOL, were patrolling North Main after receiving complaints about people loitering and selling Palmetto Roses. Two officers, Guy and Sergeant Catherine Kirkland, used a public announcement system in their marked patrol vehicle to tell the two young men selling Palmetto Roses in front of Walmart to move along. I already told you, that's the part I didn't like. I, I didn't like that. When they refused, now this is according to the, the cop's statement, the officers exited the vehicle to speak with them. Because the two sellers were blocking the entrance and exit of Walmart, officers asked them to step aside. But well, you can see for yourself. See, the part I don't like up here, see, 13-year-old arrested for selling roses. He's not arrested for selling roses. He, he's arrested for he's arrested for battery on a law enforcement officer or, or assault. That that's what he's arrested for. So anyway, you can watch the the opposite again. I I, I subscribe to him. Um, I, I generally like the guy. Um, I just disagree on on this one. So it, it is what it is. Um, everyone's got an opinion. Um, he said, "Hey, they're gonna they're gonna post the the raw uncut." And they think that people are going to agree with them. Well, I'm Roger P. Foley, and I agree with them. Um, I think that the officers could have done a little bit better with the horn and the the tone or the excitement. But I get it; they have to elevate a little bit to 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 show um, authority. Um, some people may not like their tone. I didn't like necessarily their tone. But that doesn't give me a, a reason to run or fight with a police officer or call an officer uh, a racial name. Uh, doesn't give me permission to punch an officer. A lot of people are rude and discourteous. Some of your comments will be rude and discourteous. I'm not going to punch anyone over it. So anyway, I'm attorney Roger P. Foley. Trying something new. See ya.